Hi everyone, I'm Mike Preston, Technical Marketing Architect here at Rubrik, and today I'm covering off another topic in our Rubrik and GraphQL video series. Today we're going to expand upon that second episode where we covered off GraphQL queries and how to retrieve data from the Rubrik platform. And we're going to do this by diving into a GraphQL concept called interfaces. If you've been following along, you might have noticed that when we queried our SLA domains, there was only basic information coming back. Well, learning how to query the types that implement interfaces solves that issue. So with that, let's dive in. All right, so GraphQL interfaces. Well, like many other type systems, GraphQL supports something called an interface. Now an interface is basically just an abstract type that includes a certain set of fields that any other type must include within their definition to go ahead and implement that interface. Easy, right? Well, it's easy if you're a developer, you probably already understand what exactly an interface is, but for the rest of us, let's dive into an example to help explain the concept. All right, we'll start by defining an interface. In this case, let's use sports as an example. So we have here an interface which has been defined for an athlete. Within that, we have a few properties defined. We have, of course, an ID to uniquely identify the athlete. And then we have a number of characteristics which describe them, such as their name, their height, their weight, a list of teams that they've played on, etc. So what this means now is that any type that is defined which implements our athlete interface will also need to have these fields defined. So say we have a couple of types defined as follows. First, we have our hockey player type. This implements our athlete class. As well as you can see, we have a baseball player type which does the same. What this means is that both the hockey player and baseball player types will need to include those athlete fields like ID and name, height, and weight. Now, that said, any type implementing the interface is not limited to just those fields from the interface. For example, a hockey player type may also include something like a skate size field, as well as statistical information such as goals, assists, penalty minutes, and points. Similarly, our baseball player type may include a position field and other stat information like strikeouts, hits, and home runs. So now let's take a look at how to query information from our interfaces. To start, let's look at the following query. Basically, it's looking to grab some info around some of our athletes. We're searching for the ID, the name, the height, and the skate size. Well, in this case, if we run this query, we'll probably get an error returned indicating that it can't find the skate size field on the type athlete because, well, if we look at the interface again, it doesn't exist. It exists on the hockey player type, which implements our athlete interface. In the case shown now, we can only ask for information that belongs to the athlete interface, not the types which inherit it. To gather information on a specific object type, we need to use what is called an inline fragment. We covered off fragments in our second episode, but those were all user-defined. Inline fragments are a little bit different, so let's take a look at how we use them. First up, we have a similar type query. However, this time we've removed the skate size field from it. I've also added the type name field so we can see exactly which type is being returned. Now, in order to get that skate size data, we simply just define an inline fragment by entering in three dots, the keyword on, and then our type name, in this case, hockey player. Now within our inline fragment, we can then specify the fields from that type name we want, like skate size. So our results from this will be exactly what we're looking for. We can see the list of athletes, and if they are indeed a hockey player, we get their skate size as well. Now, if we wanted to get some information for the baseball players, also, say, maybe their position, we could simply just add another inline fragment like this. And again, our results now show more information being displayed for our baseball players. So we can have multiple inline fragments querying all of the different types that implement our interface. So with that, let's jump into the GraphQL playground and actually take a look at some rubric examples where interfaces come into play. So first, let's explore this SLA domains query. We have our empty query here, 
and drilling into the docs, it looks as if we can get the ID, the name, and the version. So let's enter in that information. And as well, we're gonna put the type name field here so we can see what type of SLA domain it is. So if you're familiar with rubric, you know that an SLA domain contains a lot more than just the ID name and version. And if we look at the docs here, we appear to have two types which are implementing the SLA domain interface. We have our global SLA reply and our cluster SLA domain. So in essence, global SLAs are those which have been defined within the rubric security cloud and cluster SLA domains are those which have been defined directly on the CDM cluster. So to get more information on our global SLA domains, we simply add our inline fragment with the three dots, the on keyword, and then the name of our type, which is global SLA reply. And now let's drill into the type to see what other info we can query. And voila, there's all the SLA happiness that we're looking for. So let's say we are looking to gather the base frequency of that SLA domain. We simply add it, open it up, drilling in. It looks like we need a couple of fields in regard to the duration. So let's go ahead and add those. And running the query now, we can see we're getting back some more useful information. Information we probably will be looking for beyond simply gathering the name and version of SLA domains. So that's really it for interfaces. It's a real quick one today. So as you're perusing through the documentation and you're looking at the different queries, wondering why you don't see the information that you're trying to retrieve, be sure to keep an eye on the implementation section, which outlines all of the different types that implement that defined interface. More than likely, that's where you're gonna find the information you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed the video today and be sure to follow along with the playlist as we have a ton more topics to cover off within the Rubrik API ecosystem in future episodes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.